the ancient land of Egypt, the pharaohs were considered living gods. When they died, they were buried with priceless treasures. Their tombs were often sealed with granite plugs and hidden to discourage thieves. Sometimes the tombs were even protected by a curse. In the 19th century, European archaeologists started exploring the tombs, hoping to find one that still held its vast treasures. Invariably, though, they were disappointed. The tombs were all empty, looted in antiquity. One archaeologist, Howard Carter, was convinced that if he could find the tomb of an almost unknown pharaoh, King Tutankhamun, it might still be intact. Tutankhamun had come to the throne as a boy and died as a young man. His successor had removed the king's name from all official records, even those carved in stone. Carter thought this might have protected Tut's tomb from looters. Carter, funded by the Egyptian enthusiast Lord Carnarvon, searched the Valley of the Kings year after year. Then on November 4th, 1922, his crew found a tomb with Tut's name on it. Carter wired Carnarvon, who was in England, about the find. The Lord booked passage on the next steamer to Egypt. Three weeks later, he joined Carter, as the tomb was opened for the first time in 33 centuries. The tomb appeared to be completely intact. The news made headlines around the world. Even though Tut was a minor king and his tomb was relatively small, it was packed with an unbelievable array of valuable objects made of gold, other precious metals, and rare stones. It was rumored that before Carter had opened the tomb, he had found a tablet in the antechamber. Not wishing to scare his workers, he hid it because it contained a fearful curse. Six months after the tomb was opened, the world was shocked when Lord Carnarvon died of an infection from an insect bite. On the same day, back in his estate, his son reported that his favorite hound howled and then dropped dead. Meanwhile, back in Cairo, there were reports that upon his death, the power went out all over the city, plunging it into darkness. Carter denied the existence of the tablet and scoffed at the idea of a curse, but the press immediately jumped on the story. They carefully started recording the demise of any person connected in any way to the excavation. By 1935, the newspapers had credited the curse with 21 victims. The most spectacular of these was the death of Lord Westbury, whose son had been Carter's personal secretary. Westbury, after leaving a note saying that he could not stand any more horrors, leapt from his 8th floor apartment window. Some believe that it wasn't a mummy's curse that killed the victims, but a fungus infection. Several scientists have suggested that mold spores could have been sealed in the tomb. Some spores have been shown to survive after laying dormant for many, many years. The scientists speculate that when the tomb was first opened, an incoming breeze may have thrown the spores into the air so they were breathed in by the victims. Many people are skeptical that the curse exists at all. Mark Nelson from the Monash University did a study to see if the curse affected the lifespans of those exposed to it. He checked the history of 44 Westerners who were in Egypt at the time the tomb was opened. 25 of these were exposed to the curse, while the rest were not. He found that the age of death of the two groups was not significantly different. Perhaps the person most likely to suffer from any curse was Carter himself. He both opened the tomb and unwrapped the mummy. Carter never believed in the curse, however, and lived for 17 more years after finding the boy king. He died in 1939 at nearly the age of 65 of entirely natural causes. <laughs>